Okay. Welcome. Thank you for having Ford Motor Company here at uh, Campus Party Brazil. We are thrilled to be the first automaker here at Campus Party. We uh, really feel like this is a, an important place for us to be because this is where the community is that we need to reach. It's the community of developers, of gamers, of people who are on the cutting edge of technology. My name is Scott Monty. I'm the global head of social media with Ford. Just wanted to uh, give you an opportunity to follow the hashtag that we have set up, Ford NASCPBR. Uh, if you have any questions, any comments, we'd be happy to take them uh, throughout the course of the uh, presentation. So thinking about this globally for a moment, people wonder how can you create a social media strategy for a global company? Well, it might seem complex, but in the end, it comes down to some very basic things. And those basics include, first of all, creating strong products. You know, if we don't have good products, what are people going to talk about? We spent a lot of time in 2006, 2007, taking our financials, taking our budgets, and putting it into research and development, putting it into great product design. Because once you've got good products, people will have something to talk about. The second thing that we need to do is give people engaging content. Give people content that matters to them. It could be something that makes them laugh. It could be something that makes them proud to share, to be the first among all of their friends to share some news, or perhaps to look like the smartest person in the room because we've said something that agrees with their position, right? But it's about connecting emotionally with people. That's what engaging content is. And then we need to speak like them. You know, how many people have, uh, have tried to read something that a lawyer wrote or a press release? People don't talk like that. People talk like you're talking with colleagues and peers all around the show here. And if we show people that we are human, that we speak like them and think like them, then they're going to they're gonna look at us a little bit differently. Next, we need to let them speak. All of these social platforms are two-way. We have to remember that. It's not just advertising. It's not us taking a message and pushing it on people. It's us having a conversation and acknowledging them for what they have said to us. Everybody wants to be listened to. And when we as a global company can reach out to an individual and say thank you or how can we help, suddenly they realize that we're not as much of a, an impersonal company and they realize that we're looking at them as more than just a number. They're a, they're a person. But putting it all together, the most important part about all of this, about creating our global strategy for social media, is the ability and the responsibility to listen. Since Henry Ford's time, people have bought cars and put them in their front yard or put them in their driveway. And they've told everyone about them, their family, their friends, their neighbors. People still do that today, only now people are having these conversations online. People are doing it in a way that we can actually follow what they're saying. And we can say thank you. And we can say how can we help if there's an issue. And we can encourage them to take that picture that they've shared of their Ford vehicle and to share it with the world and to let us share it with the world as a result. And again, this ability to listen, it feeds back into the, into the top part of the loop. If we listen, we can create great products. We can create engaging content. We know what they sound like and so on and so forth. So in 2009, as we realigned Ford as one global company, not as a bunch of different uh, countries doing their own thing. We decided to bring 
to, to make our cars truly global. And the first global car was the Fiesta. It was available in Europe, and we wanted to bring it to the United States a little bit early. So we gave 100 Fiestas to digital influencers. We knew that it wasn't enough for us to simply advertise to them because they don't trust companies the way we used to trust companies. Trust has broken down. Who do they trust? They trust people like them. And of course, we can make it apparent that there are people like them that work at Ford. There are tens of thousands of us. But there are also people like them who drive our vehicles. And we thought by putting 100 Ford Fiestas into the hands of 100 digital influencers before anyone else had the opportunity, we could let them talk for us. We could let them tell our story. Each month, we gave them a mission. And all they had to do was shoot one video. One video. The rest of the time, they were doing what they normally do, tweeting, updating Facebook, putting photos on Flickr, and YouTube, videos on YouTube, and blogging. They were our digital ambassadors. And in the end, we actually saw an impressive bunch of statistics. Now, remember, this was nearly four years ago. The social media world was a different world then. So these numbers may look small now, but at the time, they were quite impressive. 6.2 million views of those 100 people's videos on YouTube. 750,000 views of their photographs on Flickr. 40 million impressions on Twitter of the phrase Fiesta Movement. And in the end, 132,000 people said, tell me more about this car when it comes to the dealership. 82% of them had never owned a Ford before in their life. And a third of them were under the age of 25, which gave us an opportunity to have a relationship and begin a relationship with these people throughout the course of their adult car buying life. This was a transformational uh, effort for us. And the lesson that we learned, the takeaway that we had here, is that if you do have a great product, if you have focused your efforts on creating that great product or service, let other people tell the story for you. Because if you're, if you're confident enough to let go of your fear, and you're confident enough in your product, you should have no problem with what other people say. Now moving on, we've got a, a site that we uh, regularly that we regularly update. It's called Ford Social. And this is a site where we have an opportunity to uh, to tell our story but also to highlight other people's stories as well. I love this story. 71-year-old woman bought a 5.0 liter Mustang GT so she could race her grandsons. We can't make this stuff up. That's, that's Nana right there, right? That's her story. So we're giving other people an opportunity to shine in addition to helping everybody understand what it is that we do on, uh, on the site. We also uh, decided to add a series of badges on the site, not because we were trying to be like Foursquare, but what we were trying to do was give people choices and to identify themselves, to say, yeah, I'm interested in Mustangs, or I'm interested in electric vehicles. Usually those two don't come together. You don't have Mustang owners and the V8 enthusiasts in the same room as the hybrid and the electric car people. So what we did is we gave people an opportunity to tell us what content mattered to them. And that in turn gives us the opportunity to specifically target them with the content that matters. Right? So they, they collect their badges, which looks cool, but it also acts as a content management system for us as we get to know our consumers. And as that community grows, we're looking to give people opportunities to do things with us. We, we call it surprise and delight. So for example, earlier this month, 
at the North American International Auto Show in Detroit, the biggest auto show of the year, we invited a couple of people who were members on Ford Social who were, you know, maybe, uh, maybe they commented the most or maybe they shared our articles with other people the most or maybe they acted like community managers for us, but we rewarded them with uh, going to Detroit to see the auto show. And in the end, the lesson we've, that we've learned here is that it's not just a matter of having a special campaign. Social media is about always being on. It's about a commitment day in and day out to be there for your community when they expect you to be there. Next, uh, we decided that when we reinvented the Ford Explorer, a, a vehicle that really gave the SUV category its name, that we had to do it vastly differently. So this is the vehicle here. 2011 Ford Explorer. We were introducing it in 2010. And we decided that rather than at an auto show, which is very traditional, uh, we would introduce it in July, in the middle of summer, in North America. And we would do it on Facebook and in eight cities simultaneously. And we let people know about four months in advance what our plans were. And we engaged them along the way. We gave them sneak peeks. We gave them interviews with some of our product designers. We let them behind the scenes to experience the building of excitement here. And then on that day, the day of the auto show, we gave people an opportunity to check off, uh, the day of the reveal, we gave people a chance to check off what mattered to them. And as an added incentive, we were giving away an explorer. It never hurts to really get people going. And if you haven't figured it out yet, we're giving away uh, some things outside with the Ford vehicles you saw out there, the Ford Fusion and the Ford Echo Sport. If you haven't had a chance to check out our booth outside, please do that because there's some pretty surprising stuff happening there too. But in the end, we had events going on in eight cities across the United States on a single day, and it was our goal to own the news that day, to be at the top of everyone's news charts. And we provided updates throughout the day, giving people a choice as to who and when and how they wanted to engage with our content. And we did it, and we, we drove interest in that with a very targeted digital media buy. So, of course, we had the, the owned media, the Facebook page and the conversations and everything that we controlled. We had all of the press that was building around uh, the launch day. And then we had the paid media, paid, earned, and owned media together. And the results were pretty impressive. Throughout the day, the Ford Explorer hashtag was the number one trend on Twitter. It was the number two trend on Google overall for that day. And that was a day that Lindsay Lohan was being admitted to or released from some facility. So the entertainment world always uh, gets top, top billing. But we had 100 million social impressions, 400 million uh, browser impressions that day, and over 66 million Americans were reached. Impressive, to say the least. And that taught us the importance of completely integrating paid, earned, and owned media together. Not just side by side, but bringing them together for a much more powerful result. When we decided to launch the Focus as a global vehicle, we turned to a puppet. Because of course, you want puppets when you're launching a global vehicle, right? It was a crazy idea. Nobody thought it would work, especially the senior management. But they let us experiment. They let us go ahead with it. We needed to reach mostly more young men than young women, but people who really hadn't paid attention to the Ford Focus, or maybe to whom the Ford Focus had become a national joke. And there were actually online communities that had been established because people hated the old Ford Focus. So we decided to introduce the new one to them with a splash of humor and a splash of uh, something rather unusual. We knew that we had, to, we had to speak their language, like that first slide said. 
We had to get down and we had to, we had to use humor. And we had to be aware that what we were doing was, was a joke. But that ultimately that the value we wanted them to derive from this was about entertainment. And ultimately, the web series that we did of 50 videos was not about the car. It was about the relationship between Doug, the puppet, and John, his official Ford guy. And people became interested in their relationship. And the car served as a backdrop. And of course, we had to get the product features in there, but we needed to do it in a different and clever way. And here to demonstrate how that's done is none other than Doug himself. I think that went really well. Oh, I, I do too. I mean, I think it went well in the sense of, well, that was lame. What are you talking about? People love the car. People, for whatever reason, seem to think we have some chemistry. Well, I think what people thought was, why is that one guy trying to overshadow that other guy? How am I going to overshadow you? You're exactly. orange. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Why do you even try? I'm not trying. We're a team here, and I am trying to... You are trying. Here's what you're trying. You're trying my patience. You know what? I'm done talking to you as a person, and now I'm going to use my finger to uh, text you. I'm going to communicate with you through sync. This is, this is ridiculous. Please say a command. Listen to text. This is how it's going to be. This is how it's going to be. You're just going to sit here mm -hmm. texting me. You know what I'm saying to you, but I'm going to say it out loud. I say LOL. I am rolling on the floor laughing. I am ROFL. Please say a command. Listen to text. You're a sad little man living in a sadness cave. <laughs> Sad little man, you know what? Guess where you don't want to go? You don't want to go into the height thing, you orange hobbit. Please say a command. Listen to text! Your mom likes hobbits. So not exactly the typical corporate video that you would expect to see from Ford, but it was done in a way that again, entertain people, and it succeeded beyond our wildest hopes. Over four million content views on those little videos. Um, Doug himself had a Facebook page. He had 44,000 fans, which was more fans than a competitor's vehicle that was competing against the Ford Focus. A puppet had more Facebook fans than a competing vehicle, right? We saw favorable opinion rise by 77% and favorable purchase consideration increase to 60, 61%. Impressive numbers to say the least. But what that told us in the end is that people engage with personalities, not with product features. They like that human or semi-human element. So I've been giving you a number of United States examples. I'd like to give you a great example from here in Brazil, if I could. Uh, the Ford Fusion uh, was launching here in Brazil. Of course, you saw it outside. Uh, but we knew that we needed to go beyond a traditional old media style campaign. And for our message to have any credibility, we needed to get earned, owned, and paid media working together once again. So. What we did is we put together uh, the Fusion uh, Grand Prix or Fusion GP uh, video. And you'll see that it's a couple of long-standing race car drivers, rivals, who are competing against each other on the track in a Fusion. And it works because, the, again, the people are getting interested in the rivalry, the relationship. And as an added bonus, they're seeing the performance of the car. And it's a lot of fun. So I'll give you a, uh, a highlight as to what we're talking about with that video here.
It's much better with sound, trust us. Okay, well, well, if you um, if we can't show it now, if you go to www.ford.com.br slash fusion gp, you should be able to um, to take a look at that video. It's also on the Ford Brazil Facebook page, um, so check it out. It's already got over uh, a million views, and it's only been out for about two weeks. So it shows you the power of the great content. Moving on, um, this year marks the 150th anniversary of the birth of Henry Ford. Now, Henry founded a company on ingenuity. And you'll see that over the course of time, Henry used mechanical solutions to improve lives and to really change the world. And it's actually borne out with his ad that he put in a, a magazine in 1925, opening the highways to all mankind. He wanted to make personal mobility affordable for everyone. Well, we're still executing on that vision today, making technology affordable for everyone, making fuel efficiency affordable for everyone, not just the people that can afford the gadgets or the toys, which is why when we put sync in our uh, vehicles, our, our infotainment system, we put it in the Ford Focus first which was the lowest level vehicle in the United States at the time, to demonstrate that this is something for everyone. So as I said, that vision continues to drive us today. And when you look at how Henry Ford got where he got, he didn't do it alone. He did it by collaborating from the workers on the plant floor to his closest friends and partners. Why, he actually would go camping with Thomas Edison and Harvey Firestone. And once in a while, the President of the United States would drop by. Now, it, was, it doesn't matter whether these were important people or not. Henry's vision was collaborating. Collaborating and understanding the power of ideas that bring all of us together. And that's why we're excited to share with you the Ford Developer Program. We're breaking down the barrier that's traditionally existed between automakers and consumers with the launch of the first developer program in the automotive industry. This includes opening application programming interfaces, or APIs, that allow apps to interface within vehicle controls and audio, including voice recognition, displays, buttons, and microphones. We'll talk more about Sync App Link in just a moment, but let's first take a step back and show you how we got here. So the initial development of Sync was prompted by two trends. The first is that owners were telling us that smartphone integration was an important feature in their purchase decision. And the second thing is that if they had that kind of a feature in their vehicle, they would recommend it to a friend. And with the surprising growth in smartphones, just over the last year or two, we've seen a rise in the app economy. Today, there are more than one billion smartphones in use. And we've seen over 55 billion app downloads. In fact, smartphones actually outpaced feature phones in the United States for the first time last year claiming 70% of the market. So we're seeing this growth, this incredible growth. And not surprisingly, these smartphone owners want to use these expanded capabilities of their phones in the car. Voice control for phone and media players just isn't enough anymore. That was the initial aspect of sync. Now we need to go further. Now, recent studies have shown that increased in-car use of smartphone uh, users among feature phone users 
especially when it comes to the Internet. And not surprisingly, all of these new smartphone owners want to use the expanded capabilities of their phone. So, 75% believe it's important to connect their devices to the car. And 60%, 66% say that voice control is important for them. But smartphone users are more than twice as likely to use their phone's touch screens while driving. And t the embedded technology simply doesn't meet their needs. So that really puts us at a turning point for in-car connectivity, requiring a renewed effort to apply our voice-controlled principles to increased capabilities, such as app usage. And AppLink is the software technology that will enable this. It allows drivers to have a hands-free voice control experience of their smartphone in their car. That means drivers keeping their hands on the wheel and their eyes on the road. It's a critical foundation for safe driving. And for us at Ford, our primary concern is safety. Well, we've already put Sync, uh, we've already put AppLink, rather, into more than one million cars in North America. And we have plans to expand that capability to more than another million vehicles later this year. By the end of the year, we'll launch in Europe and Asia. And as this is a global technology, you can expect it to be rolled out globally. By 2015, we're predicting 14 million sync-equipped vehicles on the road, Ford vehicles. So we've already had great success in, in, in working with developers for this Sync AppLink ecosystem. And we've built it out in key categories. Categories like music and entertainment, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Slacker, and more. News and information, NPR, Stitcher, Allergy Alert, even the Major League Baseball. And of course, we've got navigation as well. Things like Scout and Roximity and our own sync destinations. And each of these apps adds value by allowing drivers to access their favorite apps while driving using voice controls so they don't have to look away from the road at their small screen of their smartphone. But today, it's about expanding the availability of AppLink software from just a few partners to a vast body of innovators, see where you fit into this, allowing anyone with a great idea for the in-car experience to create, test, and possibly deploy their app in Ford vehicles. Our developer program benefits customers, developers, and, the, and uh, the company as well. So first, how does it benefit customers? Customers will enjoy continually evolving range of choices for responsibly personalizing their in-car experiences. People don't trade their cars in every year like they trade their phones in, or like they select apps nearly every day. They'll have that opportunity now. The cadence of new features that will become available over time will become part of their ownership experience. This is especially compelling for millennials who enjoy customizing their experience wherever they go. Selecting and using apps is one of the easiest ways for them to personalize the functionality of both their communications devices and their vehicles. And of course, this benefits Ford. This allows us to harness the creativity of the community and quickly respond to market needs around the globe. That supports our global expansion by ensuring that the right apps will quickly become available in the right markets. It also helps us keep up with customer trends that change at a faster pace than ever these days. So our products remain relevant and valuable in the eyes of consumers. And then for developers, AppLink opens up a whole new blank canvas, the in-car experience. 
which can be explored on the high volume sync platform, which is a great launching point for apps and services that are relevant to the car. So our developer program is available and live today and the automobile is now open for business. With this program, we've done everything possible to make it easy to work with AppLink. So to get started, you just go to developer.ford.com and you sign up. And everything that you need is explained on the site, from program basics to agreements and licenses. Now, we generally look for apps in the categories of music and entertainment, news and information, networking, location and navigation, health and wellness, and personal productivity. However, we can't write down all the rules for appropriate in-car usage, but we, there are some kinds that we can't accept. We will instantly deny any apps that attempt to display video content or rich imagery when connected to the vehicle and apps that require reading extensive text on the in-vehicle displays. And finally, apps that involve playing games. Not exactly the thing you want to be doing while you're driving a car. So once you have a great idea for an app, you can take advantage of the most comprehensive set of resources available from any automaker. The software development kits for iPhone and Android, SDK documentation, test procedures, sample code, blog posts, tips and tricks, an online forum, and a staff of four developers to help you out. And we'll even make a technology development kit available for you. It's basically sync in a box so you don't have to own a Ford vehicle in order to test out your app. Although we'd prefer that you did own a Ford vehicle. Over the next few months, our team will be releasing even more tooling, such as a software emulator, self-certification codes, and debugging options to help you get there even faster. And the Ford Developer Program site is available globally to all app developers, first in English and then with other languages to come. If you don't want to develop the app on your own, you don't have to do that. The Ford Developer Program will actually connect you with Jake Apps, our approved app development house. Once you've built, you can request the distribution rights, at which point your app will undergo rigorous testing to ensure that it works as intended and meets our needs and criteria for safe driving. If your apps do pass the first round of testing, all of this can happen at no cost to you. If you need help, you can use the development site to engage our testing partner, C2Com. We know there are a number of options out there, but we think developers can be more successful using the AppLink API than any other currently available for cars. Why? Well, it's easy to integrate. Developers have integrated APIs in a matter of a few days. And there are more than a million cars on the road and more coming this year in markets around the world. And we have a dedicated team to help with the software development kit and other questions that you may have in getting your app to the market. So we're excited that AppLink can support the development of new apps from the small startups, but we also want to make development easier for big players, such as Nuance and Telenav, Gracenote and Inrix. And while many think that developer programs are oriented around new app categories, a priority to Ford is to provide our customers access to the latest core automotive products such as music, news, navigation, voice, traffic, and maps, where category leaders are constantly changing. 
by providing voice access to the very latest and most popular regional apps, we can reduce the number of people reaching for their smartphones while driving. And at Ford, that's something we feel pretty good about. So as I've said, we have partners already in music and entertainment. Uh, AHA, to help organize and categorize your music. Rhapsody, a music service that allows you to stream your music uh, from their catalog of 16 million songs. And of course, Amazon Cloud Player, the second largest digital music retailer right behind iTunes. It has over 70 million downloads. So in navigation and location, one app that we're really excited about is Glimpse. Now, Glimpse enables millions of users globally to share location information with friends and family members via email, SMS, fake Facebook, or Twitter. And Glimpse eliminates the need to keep calling or texting about where you are. And for some people who have parents who want to track their every, every uh, move, you might want to be careful about Glimpse. But of course, as we continue to expand in global markets, we'll look for future advantages that AppLink will provide as it relates to local map content, traffic, local or regional muse, uh, music and news, and off-board language technology. AppLink will help ensure that regional content will quick, quickly become available in new markets and that people will easily be able to interact with their AppLink apps in their own language. And as all of these partners show, AppLink literally presents a world of opportunity for developers to bring great new in-car experiences to millions of customers and to become part of a vibrant and growing AppLink ecosystem. And we're not stopping there. We'll continue to introduce new APIs over time to feed the developer community's hunger for creative new opportunities. And as a matter of fact, we're going to go one step further for our developer partners. One thing we've noticed is that developers are overwhelmed by all of the software platforms out there, some of which they're even asked to pay to use. Well, at Ford, we're going to make it easy for them to succeed in the automotive space. To help, we're doing something that no other automaker has done. We're offering our software for free, globally, license-free, and royalty-free. We're confident that we're following in the footsteps of Henry Ford and the advances that we're making in social media and in the developer world and with our in-vehicle technology will keep Ford as a leader in innovation for the next hundred years. Thank you very much. Uh, se alguém tiver alguma pergunta para o Scott, fiquem à vontade.